The 4th century in Roman Britain was a time of extremes. The island was undergoing a period of unparalleled prosperity. Landowners built huge villas, the like of which would not be seen in Britain again until the 18th century. Surplus grain was exported to feed the imperial armies toiling along the Rhine frontier. Art and literature reached their zenith. But underneath this explosion of light also lay a dark shadow. Usurping tyrants, rebellion and invasion all conspired to render Britain fragile and tense. To combat this threat, the Roman historian Ammianus Marcellinus describes a type of frontier scout called Arcanus. These scouts, or Arcani, were tasked to slip quietly deep into the tribal territories north of Hadrian's Wall. There they would gather information and report back to their frontier commanders. Unlike the usual soldier in late Roman Britain, armoured for frontline fighting, this man carries and uses equipment more suited to long-range scouting work. Here he has shed the heavy armour and weapons for lighter gear, which will allow him to move quietly through the wooded landscape. This Miles Arcanus, or the Secret One, moves alone, using his knowledge of the land and relying on his skills to survive. Here we follow one such figure, Flavius Herennius, detached from his regular unit based at Hadrian's Wall. His task is to surveil one of the major droving tracks used by the native Caledonians to move cattle herds south to the lucrative army garrisons at the Wall. Recording his observations on the wax of his writing tablets, this Arcanus will watch the droving track. He will note numbers and frequency and wait to see if anything unusual is emerging. Rumours hint at tribes moving and gathering in the north, and he will need to alert the wall garrisons if those tribes begin moving south. This Arcanus carries a simple ceramic flask for water. The one here is based on a find in a mine in southern Spain. These flasks were sturdy and, unlike their leather counterparts, kept the water cool. To help him survive deep in the woods and remote tracks, this Miles Arcanus carries only basic campcraft and survival equipment. On the right, you can see his wood axe and a combination spoon and fork. He carries a simple saw protected by a leather sheath. A falx or bill hook to cut back light bush and clear the campground. A pouch which contains his fire starting gear. Another small pouch containing personal items. Roughly carved tent pegs. a carving knife. A small trivet and cooking pan for campfire use.
a drinking cup in a typical northern Romano-British style. The satchel he carries is based on a 6th century Pictish design, but would have been common across the British Isles in the 4th century also. For weapons, this Arcanus carries a short sword known as a semi spartha This one is based on an Irish blade and was typical for the natives of that time. He also has a sling at his belt which will allow him to hunt for small game. Also on the belt is a Germanic style fighting knife. Together, this equipment and the few weapons he carries allows him to move quietly and swiftly through the dense northern woods. Our Arcanus has travelled on foot roughly three days north of the wall. He is deep inside the territory of a tribal federation known as the Votadini. These Votadini are allied to Rome and receive regular subsidies in terms of gold, silver and trading rights. The droving track south from the mountains is the artery which carries the trading goods into Rome. Cattle, sheep, pelts and furs, and other goods desired by the soldiers and civilians in the north of Roman Britain. The land here is a mixture of dense woodlands, uncultivated marsh, and settlements ringed with farming and grazing land. Here, at the northern edge of the land, controlled by the Votadini, a day's march to the north lie the great mountains of Caledonia, and the aggressive tribes of the Picts. It would not take much for a Pictish force to move suddenly southwards into Votadini land and then on to the wall. And while the Votadini are allied to Rome, it is always wise to keep one eye on your enemy and another on your friend. This close to the droving track, Herennius dare not light a fire. The smoke will all too easily give away his high position over the track. Instead, he will snack on his dried tack or bucolatum biscuit and wait until he is returning and hidden in the deep woods before cooking a hot meal. He will divide his time between observing the track below and maintaining his equipment. While the role of Emile's Arcanus can be dangerous while alone north of the wall, it also has long moments where solitude and silence are his only companions. Herennius is fortunate, however. He has camped a few nights, observed the great track and noted nothing untoward. It is high summer, those moving south towards the wall are herding cattle or sheep. A few carts trundle past, ladle with bundles of furs or pelts. He sees small bands of young men whom he will suspect will be eager to join the standards of Rome. Nothing more.
Satisfied, this Miles Arcanus, Flavius Serenius, decides finally to begin the long three-day march back to the wall and the warm company and humour of his companions. <laughs>